how to read an op amp data sheet I'd like to thank Thomas M. Frederickskin for writing this book intuitive IC op amps um, it was written a while back but uh, this book is great for learning how to do real uh, op amp design so a lot of times I'm on electronics forums and I keep seeing this comment again and again be careful data sheets lie and you know it's a pretty pervasive comment I believe there's four reasons for this and the first one is that the individuals that write the data sheet at a particular company all have uh, conflicting goals the other reason is the people who make this comment they really don't know how to read a data sheet and these same people don't understand uh, that the parts that they buy will have a statistical variance. And then another reason that I just uh, read about today, uh, October 3rd, 2013, is that there's a big problem with counterfeit parts. So let's go through this. So we'll start with uh, the counterfeit part problem. Um, people, when they test a, a part, um, they'll have a statistical range, and let's say some parts are better than others. They'll put a special code on that on the chip to show that this is a high quality chip, and they'll sell it for more money. So sometimes people will buy low quality chips, strip off the code that uh, says they're a low quality chip and then hand print or, or some way print on a code that it's a high quality chip and you don't know that it's it's not what you bought until it starts smoking on you uh, another thing is is um, there are parts that fail to work at all and they're supposed to be thrown out or, or at least destroyed so they can't get out there but what must happen is that employees must take these failed parts I mean absolutely don't work and then somehow get them into the supply chain and uh, even the military is getting uh, caught with with bad parts so really don't buy parts that just fell off the back of the truck all right let's talk about the data sheet so there's a few people that go into making a data sheet there's the design engineer and that person designs the circuitry inside the op amp and they want to show off that their their design is a lot better than the old design and this is even in house right because they're trying to justify their existence and so there's a pressure on that person to overstate the performance characteristics then you have a marketing engineer or an applications engineer they sell the parts to the company uh, to the customer and they're competing with all the other op amp companies out there uh, they also create sample applications and they have a pressure to overstate the performance characteristics now the test engineer they actually have to verify everything that you read in the data sheet and they're under pressure to minimize the testing time and to automate testing and because testing time equals money and so they kind of have a pressure to underestimate the performance parameters because sometimes you can sell a part uh, for more money because of a higher quality the thing is is it's really the same part it's just statistically some parts are higher quality than others and so to guarantee some high value of let's say open loop gain might require more testing on the test engineers part so they're not going to want to guarantee that a high value of anything because of guaranteeing a higher value will make them rather than test one out of every hundred chip maybe it's one out of every ten all right they're also trying to reduce the blame of anybody blaming them for something not being compliant and then there's the manufacturing engineer uh, the design engineer sends the, the design to the manufacturing house or sometimes it's it's the same company and the problem is is that not every part that gets fabricated can be sold all right 
If you fabricate a part and test it, and it turns out that it doesn't work, or it doesn't work as well as your guarantee, that means you can't sell it and you kind of have to throw it out. Of course, like I said, some people aren't doing this and they're selling counterfeit parts. So this is the number of parts that you can sell divided by the number of fabricated parts is your yield. And this is really important. So there's a pressure to increase your yield. And so they kind of want to underestimate the performance of any part because that means more parts will meet a lower standard and their yield and thus their profit go up. Now each parameter, if you look at the data sheet, can have a minimum, typical, and a maximum value. And let's just take an example of the open loop gain down here. It has some test conditions, and I have a minimum for if RL is greater than 2K of 450 and a typical of 800 volts per millivolt for this particular part, the LT1001AC. Now the thing is, is uh, the typical, yep, you might run into that you know, nine times out of 10, but the company is only guaranteeing 450, and that's if you buy this part. If you buy the 1001M or 1C, they're only going to guarantee the 400 volts per millivolts. So if I assume in my design 800 and then my design doesn't work, it's not my fault. It's not the supplier's fault. It's not a counterfeit part. It's my fault because I fail to understand that 450 is really what's guaranteed. Let's take a look at RN. Again, the larger, the more ideal. So if we come down here, um, they say in typical it's 100 mega ohms. And for the this part, you get 30. And this part over here, a slightly lower rated part, is 15 mega ohms. Now the thing is, is these parts are made by the same process. It's just testing. Every time they test a part and it's above a minimum of 30 megs, they put a LT1001 stamp on it. And if it's only 15 meg or better, they'll put this part name on it. Now with V, with v offset, the maximum is the guarantee. I'm not going to go into it today, but V offset is a, it can affect the results of, of your design. Uh, modern op amps, it's pretty small. But the thing is, is what's really the small, and the smaller the better. So really, the maximum 60 microvolts, that's the guarantee, not the typical. And minimum doesn't even show because zero would be ideal. So they're not even going to put anything in that column. Now the thing about these guaranteed values is that they're only guaranteed for certain test conditions. And so you'll look on the data sheet and it'll show you what temperature these parts are guaranteed to work at. And over here in the conditions, they have all these notes. Um, like for instance, the load resistance has to be greater than 2K or you will not see, or they won't guarantee 450 or 400. And you read through these notes and it'll tell you all the all the little things that you have to keep track of before uh, you can guarantee those results. And the other thing is, is some parameters have a statistical value. Uh, here is a, a, a distribution of V offset voltage. But in general, you won't get a plot like this. Okay, that's sometimes a trade secret even. What you end up doing is using the minimum value, for instance, of open loop gain and RN. And even when you do that, it's possible for a, a bad part to slip through. But the thing is, is, if I use the minimum value of open loop gain in my design and then I get uh, my part and I measure the open loop gain and it's a little bit bigger than that minimum value, the data sheet isn't lying to me. It's actually that part is better than the guarantee. And then the last thing is that a great way to learn design is to read through those application circuits. So um, while photodiode amplifier circuits are in textbooks, 
it won't really have all of this external circuitry. You'll just have the photodiode and one resistor. What is great about this is that this is a real practical circuit where they've got a filter uh, between the 500K and the 100 picofarad. That'll, that'll filter high frequency noise from the photodiode amplifier. And this is something you won't see in a textbook where it raises uh, this side of the op amp to slightly above ground, but also there's a filter for high frequency noise here. And the output, it'll tell you the transfer function. So for every microamp of photodiode generated current, the output will go up by a volt. And so if you're using that for uh, some kind of sensor and a robot line following, this circuit is a lot more practical than a circuit uh, straight out of the textbook. Because remember, the textbook is trying to show you the simplest thing to understand it. All right. But the data sheet is trying to sell you their part. And so they really want to show you designs that will work. Because if you're if they sh if they're the company will sell you a part but they can't guarantee that you know how to use it properly so uh, let's say you did a photo uh, diode amplifier but didn't get rid of the noise and your circuit doesn't work you're not gonna blame yourself you're gonna blame the company so they'll provide sample ways again with the frequency filtering here uh, to make your stuff work right off the bat. And I did try this circuit in LT Spice and it works as advertised.